video we're going to start the topic, what makes a car stop. This is the introduction to that topic. Hello and welcome back to Everyday Physics. In this topic, we're going to be looking at what makes a car stop. This is going to be a continuation of the branch of physics known as mechanics. So in this topic, we're going to be considering the relationship between acceleration and velocity when these two quantities are in opposite directions. So we actually need an acceleration or a force in the opposite direction to the velocity of an object to slow it down. We're going to be looking at the frictional force in a lot more detail as this is the force which is responsible for slowing cars down. We're also going to be looking at the physics behind car crashes. In order to understand car crashes, you're going to need to know what momentum is, what impulse is, and we'll also be looking at the law of conservation of momentum. Finally, we're going to consider what happens as a car changes direction. So we'll be looking at circular motion to describe cars turning corners. As part of this topic, you're going to be conducting an investigation where you'll be measuring the coefficient of static friction between a surface and an object. So in order to do this, you're going to need to set up a ramp at home. To set up the ramp, you may want to use a large book or a plank of wood or anything else that you have to hand which an object could slide down. You'll then need to choose an object which will slide down your ramp. You don't want an object with wheels, you just want a flat object. You need to be able to add mass in the form of extra books, maybe stones, potatoes, whatever you can think of to add some extra mass to your object. And what you'll be doing is measuring the angle at which it starts to move down that slope. So you'll also need access to a protractor. Okay, good luck and I hope you enjoy this topic. Special thanks to Sebastian Frick for filming this video.